بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم ما بعد حبت في الله uh, دليل or evidence that the Khawarij or Daesh or ISIS or ISIL or Boko Haram or Al Qaeda or any of these groups but let's just stick with ISIL right now or ISIS that they are from Ahl Bid'a and they differ with Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a and they are not from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a and they are not Salafiyin or Salafiyun they are not from Salafiyya and they have nothing to do with Salafiyya wala shay wala mithqal dharratan طيب let's listen first the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah and how this differs with the Khawarij we're going to do our best to be as brief and quick because our time is super limited let's just do our best qala shaykh ibn uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala qal man yuhkim qawanin al-wadi'iyya huwa kafir yani al-wasf am wa laysa wasf al-mu'ayyin fa yajibu an ya'lam al-muslim anna hunaka farqan farqan bayna al-wasf shay bikun بكونه كفرا وبين وصف المعين بكونه كافرا فقد يوصف شيئا بكونه كفرا بالاتفاق لكن فاعله المعين لا يوصف بكونه كافرا ولا يحكم عليه بكونه كافرا إما لعدم الاجتماع شروط أو لوجود المانع أحبت في الله علامة إمام الفقي بن ثمين رحمه الله تعالى said and this was about the issue of ruling by other than what Allah سبحانه وتعالى reveals ruling by other than divine law we know the Khawarij and we know the Tekfiriyin of this day and age that they are quick to make a ruling on the person who doesn't rule by Allah سبحانه وتعالى's rule they use the ayat and or the ayat to substantiate their belief but this is a istinbat ghayr sahih this is an analysis of the text and a usage of the text which is not which is incorrect Ben Othamin says whoever rules by uh, worldly man-made laws then he's a disbeliever now if we were to leave the kalam there we just stop what Ben Othamin says right there then we would say, okay, these tekfirin, they're correct. But let's continue on to what we already quoted from Bin Uthaymin himself. He said, yani, bima'na, in, in, in the meaning, that the general rule, <coughs> al-wasf'am, the general uh, description, or a general description of this, uh, this act, or this action, and this is not... Uh, a specific ruling and he's going to detail what he means so he says then it is an obligation to know, that a Muslim knows and or understands that there's a difference between a general description or, or the description of something and that it is disbelief and between the description of a particular individual and saying that he's a disbeliever because therefore describing something as disbelief even that has consensus on it however or uh, by describing something that is a, an act of disbelief or saying of disbelief that it has consensus on it however the one who does it the specific individual who does that dis that act of disbelief which the scholars have agreed is disbelief we do not describe as a as a disbeliever meaning we do not say that make take fear of them say that they uh, are no longer Muslim and we don't make the ruling upon them that they are disbeliever until or he's making the excuse of the one who, who doesn't fall into disbelief or who doesn't become a disbeliever either because the conditions for takfir 
are not in place, Willie would you do man it? And <laughs> because there is something that prohibits, one of the prohibitors are in place that prohibit from making takfir. Let's synthesize this so that we, we understand. This is with a general translation. Let me tell you what it means. What it means is that, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, and I will try to find uh, the statement and I've used it before, that everyone who falls into disbelief is not a disbeliever. That's the, the shahid. That is the the main thing. This differs, this is an extremely uh, hard concept for the takfiriyin to understand. And especially the laymen from the takfiriyin, those who embrace extremism, like many of the youth who go to Syria and all these other places of conflict, Iraq and wherever, and or they do commit acts in the West or wherever they live, uh, in the name, thinking that it's in the name of, it, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the name of Islam, which is a lie and which is falsehood and is the, the uh, 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 evidence that they are deceived by the shaitan and deceived by Hizb al-Shaitan, deceived by the party of shaitan, meaning the takfiriyin like ISIL and other groups. They don't accept this kind, this principle, that everyone who falls into disbelief is not a disbeliever. Where do I come from this? Okay, this is a statement of Shaykh al-Islam. Where does Shaykh al-Islam come with this? How can we say this principle? Where's the delil for this? Where's the evidence for this? This is what those people will say. Let's go to one hadith. There's many hadith. And this book, this uh, argument, I'm taking from a fantastic book I just bought at the the, fa the uh, book fair in Jama Islamia in Medina Manawara by our Sheikh. <laughs> Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili Hafizullah Ta'ala. Fantastic book. I urge you to get it. It's new. 2017 just came out within the past few months. Uh, dealing in very detailed way some of the arguments of the Tekfidiyin and a refutation of ISIS and other Tekfidi groups. Let's listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which is evidence for this. This is just one evidence that we that is well known from the Sunnah. I'm sure many of you have heard this hadith. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqad Asraf al Rajulun al Nafsi. Falamma hadarahu al Mot Osa Bani Fakal Ida Anna Mutu Fa Ahrukani Thumma فإذا هو قائم قائم فقال له ما هملك على ما سنعت فقال خشيتك يا ربي أو قال مخافتك فغفر الله فغفر الله بذلك. In this hadith of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام, which is a hadith in Sahih Muslim. A man, the Prophet ﷺ said <clears throat> that there was a man who was fearful for himself. And when he was close to death, he advised his children, his sons, and he said, if I die, burn me and take my ashes and throw them in the wind in the sea. <coughs> and he said, for I swear by Allah that if my Lord has the ability over me that he would punish me in a way that he has punished no one else in such a manner. Meaning he'll be punished severe for his sins, for the, the sins that, this, that he did. 
So they did this. They burned him and threw his body, uh, threw his, his ashes in the wind. And then it was said to the earth, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the earth, bring him back together. So he came back and he was standing. And then it was said to him, what caused you to do this? He said, I was fearful of you, my Lord. Or he said, which means I was fearful of you, then he forgave him for that. Listen to this, Abid Allah. What did the ulama say about this hadith? Qala ulama, this was Shaykh Suleiman Rahim, he said, uh, that the ulama say, لو كان كافرا لما غفر له فهذا الرجل قل قال كفر وظن الكفر لكنه لم يكفر بدليل أن الله غفر له So we'll leave uh, right there. So Sheikh Suleiman Rahili said, حفظ الله تعالى <coughs> He said that the ulama, the scholars say about this hadith that if this man was a disbeliever then he would not be forgiven. This man fell into disbelief. He said a statement of kufr. He said that Allah cannot resurrect me, resurrect me or that Allah, uh, uh, you know, out of his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made a statement of disbelief and he believed, disbelieved that Allah did not have the power to resurrect him. So he felt that by burning his body and distributing his ashes in the sea and letting the wind distribute his ashes, that he would not be punished. And, uh, and, and you know, and that his body would not be collected together for resurrection. This is disbelief, as as he said. This is an action uh, or a belief of disbelief, and an action or a statement of disbelief. But with that, it shows that he was not a disbeliever, and because Allah subhanahu wa taala forgave him. Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said about this uh, statement, said about this hadith. This man, he had doubt about the ability of Allah. And Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, he said, this man had doubt about the, uh, the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that Allah would have the ability to be able to resurrect him or bring him back. And so, you know, he was burned and, you know, had his body distributed. You know, his, his ashes were distributed. Rather, Sheikh al-Islam says, rather, he believed that he would not be resurrected or he would not be uh, returned. That shows what? That shows disbelief in the ability of Allah and disbelief in uh, the re resurrection or in his resurrection at least. And he said, Shaykh Islam said, وَهَذَا كُفْرَ بِإِتِّفَاقَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ This is disbelief in accordance with the consensus of the Muslims. Not even the consensus of the scholars, consensus of the Muslims. He fell into an act of disbelief, major kufr. Then he said, However, he was ignorant. He didn't know that. He was out of ignorance. And then he said, he was a believer. And he feared Allah and the punishment and his punishment. So uh, therefore, Allah forgave him for that. Showing us what? What is the shahid here, Habit Showing us that a person can fall into kufr, the major kufr, ruling by other than what Allah uh, revealed, you know, other than the sharia, with, you know, whatever the case may be. But there are times when a person is excused, maybe by ignorance. Uh, <coughs> maybe by, of course, insanity, whatever, uh, or, or ta'wil, as the ulama say, maybe the person is muta'awul. Maybe they have a misinterpretation. So this is very important qa'idah that you must understand. That Ahlul Sunnah adheres to, and we gave you delil from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
and differentiate, differentiate Ahlul Bid'ah from Ahlul Sunnah. Would differentiate between ISIS and the Salafiyun. Which differentiates between Boko Haram and Al Qaeda and Al Shabab and the Salafiyun. Or Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. Or Ahl Hadith or Ahl Athar or whatever name you want to call them. That they differ from Ahl Bid'ah and their false interpretations and understanding of the religion which is the similar understanding as the original Khawarij and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the Shaitan and forgive me for prolonging and I wanted to make this short may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us may Allah bless us with the class with the bat may Allah bless the Muslimin everywhere may Allah forgive the Muslimin everywhere may Allah raise up the Muslimin everywhere may Allah guide humanity everywhere to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam may Allah bless us with Alman Nafi طيب وعمل متقبل وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم